recognize Albert Einstein for his theory of relativity and the Nobel Prize he won for it. He also... But I didn't win the Nobel Prize for relativity. I won it for explaining the photoelectric effect. Right, right, of, of course, sorry. Einstein won the Nobel Prize for his work on the photoelectric effect, which helped settle the age-old debate of what light is made of. So, what is it? Okay, let's rewind a little. Newton had thought light was made of particles, and his rival Hook had thought it was a wave. And when technology advanced enough, some experiments proved Hook was right. That proof, and Maxwell's equations describing light's behavior as a wave, made the debate die down, until the photoelectric effect was discovered. When light hits a cable next to another cable, electrons jump from one to the other. It was thought it happened because waves of light made atoms vibrate until they ejected an electron. But when it was measured carefully, a big contradiction was found. It only happened for light of some wavelengths. For others, no electrons jumped at all. Einstein was bewildered. The photoelectric effect should work regardless of the type of light. If light wasn't made of particles, and now it turned out that it couldn't be made of waves, what was it made of? After much reflection, he formulated a new hypothesis combining the two previous ones. What if light were made not of waves or particles, but of both? That is, what if light were made of wave packets? That concept, which we now call photons, allowed Einstein to write out equations that explain the photoelectric effect in 1905. This consolidated the idea that light can sometimes be described as a wave, sometimes as a particle, and sometimes as either. It was a revolutionary view, and it opened the field for quantum physics. Robert A. Millikan, an American experimental physicist, was unconvinced by Einstein's conclusions. So, he set out to prove him wrong by carefully measuring the photoelectric effect. However, years later, Millikan ended up proving Einstein right, and they were both awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. One of the big ideas in physics is that light can behave as waves or particles, and this demonstration of the photoelectric effect is a really great way of introducing that idea. What I've got here is a zinc plate, and if you want the demonstration to work, it's absolutely essential to give it a good scrub on both sides with a bit of iron wool, and that just removes the surface oxide layer. I then place the plate on top of this gold leaf electroscope. I've also got an ordinary desk lamp and a UV lamp. Now, in order for the demonstration to work, this plate has to be negatively charged, and I can do that using the method of charging by induction. Now, let me show you that again. I've got a perspex rod here, which I can make positively charged by rubbing with this bit of cloth. I bring the rod close to the plate, touch the plate with my finger, remove my finger, then remove the rod. Now watch what happens when I shine visible light onto the plate. Absolutely nothing. That's actually a really important part of the demonstration. Your students need to notice that with visible light, nothing happens. But watch what happens when I shine ultraviolet light. You can see that the gold leaf immediately starts to fall. And that must mean that the UV light is somehow discharging the electroscope. We know that we started with negative charge on the plate. So the UV light must somehow be releasing the electrons. And the important thing to notice is that it's the frequency of the light that makes a difference. Remember, with a visible light, it doesn't matter how bright it is or how long it shines for, it doesn't release any electrons. Now, this phenomenon cannot be explained using a wave model of light. But we can understand it if we adopt the idea that radiation arrives at the plate as packets of energy, which we can call quanta or photons. A single photon of UV light can release a single electron from the plate. 
However, a single photon of visible light has less energy and so cannot release an electron. Now, this is a relatively simple demonstration to do, but it took the genius of Albert Einstein to explain what was going on. And it was for that work that he was awarded the 1921 Nobel Prize, not his work on relativity.